On the surface, Atlantic City, New Jersey has a lot to offer. On one side, you have the ocean, the boardwalk, and the bustling casinos that line the shoreline. But ever since sports betting became legal, it really added a new boon to the city that has fallen on hard times over recent decades. But what might be good for business isn't always great for everyone else. This is where people come for exhilaration, for joy, for the chance to win big. At least the last part is true for Steve Maltepis. Yeah, we're going to shoot over to Bet Rivers. Uh, I'm going to bet a future in the NFL. I know it's a little early, but I really like uh, the price on this team. Other than that, this is just business. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, my parents came over here from Greece. Uh, grew up poor, immigrant Greek family. You know, I look at the numbers at the end of the week, how much money we made, how much money we generated, and I've been doing this for 30 years. You know, the fun's kind of out of it. Steve is what is known as a handicapper. It means he spends his work days coming to the casino to bet on sports and then putting his picks online for subscribers to access. This runner got me down 500 on this game, 400. Like, these runners get me down different amounts. And I'll tell them to bet the Jags, too, on the future. Most weeks, it requires more than 40 hours of research, looking at everything from injuries to weather to historical precedent to try and get an edge over the casinos he bets with. Yeah, we spend 8 to 16 hours a day, depending on the season, you know, running the analytics, the metrics, the gaming angles, looking at all the injuries, reading every article we, we can on the Internet, because you never know when one paragraph will set something off in your head and you'll see, you know, you'll see something, you'll see some value there. The rise in sports betting is what has given Steve his market in handicapping. This year, 50.4 million Americans bet on the Super Bowl. Overall, they wagered $16 billion compared to $7.6 billion last year. And that's just on one event. In the first 10 months of last year, $73 billion was legally wagered on sports, a 70% increase year over year. It's led to $5.7 billion in revenue for casinos, $1.3 billion in tax money for the federal government, and a whole lot of issues for those who partake. It's kind of like a Molotov cocktail disguised as a whiskey sour. Like, you know, it looks fun, it looks engaging, it looks great. And I've seen some that are a little scary. I've got more and more people calling me every week to borrow money that never asked before. And they, I lost money betting. And I'm like, hmm. Behind the glitz and the glam, there is a dark side to this venture. Yale Medicine estimates gambling addictions affect 1% of the adult population and 2 to 7% of youths. But it's difficult to assess since many who partake don't recognize their actions as problematic. No different than really any other rewarding behavior that we have, you know, alcohol, tobacco, lobster, Doritos, you know, it just gets people feeling good. Timothy Fong is the co-director of the UCLA Gambling Studies Program and says where sports betting differs from other gambling is the illusion of control. Many times, the people betting are fans of the sport who think they know more than the average person and therefore have an edge. Many times, it's not the case as it's led more people to bet on parlays, where multiple outcomes need to occur just to win one bet. It's far riskier, but pays out a much larger profit if it hits. There's zero skill in this. This is just picking numbers out of a hat. That's all it is. And anyone who wants to counter and tell me otherwise is complete full of BS, and which is different than old school traditional handicapping where I'm taking one bet on one outcome and I'm comparing it to historical numbers. Bet a lot of stuff. We're betting uh, Notre Dame plus 12, Illinois minus three, Missouri plus seven. It's why people like Steve stick to one bet and keep the emotions out of it. And even then, he's only winning 54 to 57% of the time. But with the amount he wagers each year, it's allowed him to make a sizable profit as more people flock to do the same. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Atlantic City, New Jersey.